So we'll take another look at some more set problems that we can solve. And we're gonna be using Venn diagrams in this lesson. So to use Venn diagrams, we're gonna label some regions to be able to identify the proper areas of each Venn diagram. Um, we're gonna then find the number of elements um, that are in both sets to write in the regions, find the elements that are in set A but not B, and then write those in the appropriate regions and follow through each step until we get to the very end. Now, what's tricky is if you follow this as a process, you're much better suited to the drawing the diagram process um, or answering the question than if you just try to kind of take a stab in the dark. So this is something that a lot of students try to just approach on the fly, but if we teach them to think about it in a process format, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Um, so here's the given problem that we have. We have 40 states um, that have some form of gambling, 44 states that sell lottery tickets, and 36 states that have both. So if I wanna follow that Venn diagram process, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with my diagram that we've been given. We've got regions one, two, and three, and then region four is the area outside of both circles. So we're gonna follow step one, and then we're gonna go into step two. So in step two, 36 states have both, so we're gonna put 36 into the both region. In step two, we have 40 states that have casinos gambling and 36 that have both and then four have only casino. So where this gets confusing is that we have four, so we're gonna fill in region one because that's separate from the 36. So sometimes students will try and do 36 minus four to get 32 there. There's a couple of different misconceptions that happen there. What I have to do is 44 states have lotteries and 36 have both so that that leaves only eight are left to have only lotteries. So I'm gonna put an eight into that region three. And I'm getting that eight from doing um, that 44 minus 36. That's where that eight is coming from in case you're wondering. Um, 48 states are accounted for out of our 50 states, which means that there's two states that are gonna be outside of this purview. So I'm gonna have two states that are gonna fall under that universal set outside of the circles. Now I can look at these questions easily. So I can easily see that eight states have lotteries but no casinos, which is region three. Two have neither casinos nor lotteries. And so being able to draw this diagram simplifies the amount of information that I'm processing into one visual. So let's look at another example. In this case, we've got 500 people that we're dealing with, and we're gonna random telephone dial them to find out if they have a tattoo and or a piercing. So 79 have only a tattoo, 31 have only a piercing, and 151 reported having at least one of the two. So that's not 151 have both, it's at least one of the two, which then is gonna leave us to do a little bit of math. In this example, we're gonna to have to adapt the procedure slightly because we don't know the number of both. So we're gonna put in the information that we know and then figure out the information we don't know. So in step one, we're told 79 people have only a tattoo, so we're gonna put a 79 in region one. We're told 31 people only have a piercing, so we have 31 people in region two. If there are 151 people total with a tattoo, a piercing, or both, that means that the union of sets, T and P, so tattoos and piercings, which makes up region one, two, and three, we know that there's 110 people in region one and two combined from 79 and 31. So then if I do the total people that have one or both minus that 110, that gives me 41 in region two, and the rest of the people are outside of those regions. So there's 349, which I get from 500 minus the 151. So there's 349 people outside of there. In example three, we're gonna, again, modify the process, and we're gonna use a Venn diagram to represent the following results. So 
So what I've done is I've taken and I've listed out the information from that problem. So I've taken all the numbers and identified all the numbers that are related to this. There are three overlapping systems, so this is now our starting Venn diagram. We don't just have two circles because we have three sets. So I'm going to slowly start to fill in this with what I know. I know there are 45 people that overlap all three groups. I also know there's 46 people, and I'm going to get that from 91 minus the 45, which gets me to 46 people that overlap in the green and the red. Then I'm going to do 142 minus that 45, and that's 97 people that overlap. And then if I look at both theft and domestic violence, I would do 111 minus 45, 45 which is 66 in that region. So I'm just slowly getting the, all of these answers out, pulled out of the information. So now I know there's 194 inmates arrested for theft, but I've already accounted for 188 from those regions that I've already defined. So that leaves only six left, because if I know the total amount, I should be able to do the 194 minus the 188 that are accounted for, and that tells me what I have left in the theft area. And then I'm going to follow that same process in each of the other areas to find the remaining, remaining pieces within that set. Once I figure out all of those numbers and I add them up all together, we get 275, and if there's 300 total, that means that 25 people are in that universal set outside of both of those groups. So now I can walk through that solution, I can answer different questions about that solution to be able to get to a meaningful answer. Now this is our final example, it's example four. I have another situation where I have three separate groups, so I'm going to take all of the numbers out of this problem and write them down on, on one slide or one sheet of paper. So this is really important. Write them all down, write what set they belong to next to it. Then I'm going to draw the diagram starting with that same diagram. I'm going to label what I know to be true. So there's 62 with only high cholesterol, I already know that with no math. 36 only smoking, 93 only high blood pressure, and then I have 159 in overlap between blood pressure and cholesterol, but not smoking, so that's going to highlight that area, and 23 with high cholesterol, but not blood pressure. So once I have all of the information that I can get without calculations labeled, then I start doing the actual calculation. So we have 370 people total with high cholesterol. So I'm going to add up all the values in that high cholesterol blue circle and then subtract that from the total to get who's left. I'm going to do the same thing with the other sets so that I can complete the information. And then I'm going to add up the total of all three circles, all the regions, and then take that total and do the 690 minus that to get my final answer. And once I do that, then I can actually make some meaningful answers.